fell on Spain on that Christmas week. The such a raging storm, no man could speak. And the life who thundered through an angry sea was called Solomon Brown and her company. Hello. On the 19th of December 1981, the phone rang in the home of William Trevelyan Richards, the coxswain of the Penlee lifeboat. A 1400 ton coaster called the Union Star on her maiden voyage with eight souls aboard was in terrible trouble. She'd been eight miles east of the Wolf Rock Lighthouse in southwest Cornwall when her engine had failed. The weather was a horror show, a full blown hurricane and they were drifting helplessly. Aboard that ship was the captain, Henry Morton, with his four crew, his wife and his two daughters. Further efforts to start the engine had failed and so Morton made a radio call to summon the rescue services. A Sea King helicopter was scrambled first, but the weather conditions were so appalling, the wind so fierce, they could do nothing to help. And so Richards assembled his lifeboat crew. Stephen Madron, Nigel Brockman, John Blewett, Charlie Greenall, Barry Torrey, Kevin Smith and Gary Wallace. And they launched together into the throat of the hurricane. Richards had taken care that night not to take any two men from the same family. The helicopter crew could only watch what happened when the Solomon Brown came into view, dwarfed among waves, 60 feet high. Time and time again, Richard sought to bring his vessel alongside the much larger coaster, and more than once, the Solomon Brown was tossed like a landed fish on the deck of the Union Star and then off again. At one point, they were able to maintain a position in its shadow long enough for four people to jump from the Union Star into the arms of the lifeboatman. Richards radioed Falmouth Coast Guard to say so, but that transmission would be the last anyone would hear from the Solomon Brown. All eight from the Union Star were lost, and so too the eight men of the Solomon Brown. In total, only eight of them were ever recovered, four from each crew. Some of the most moving words about that disaster were given at the inquiry by Lieutenant Commander Russell Smith, the pilot of the Sea King helicopter. He was a United States officer on exchange with the Royal Navy. And his letter was read out to the inquiry. He said, throughout the entire rescue, the Penley crew never appeared to hesitate. After each time they were washed or blown away from the Union Star, the Penley crew immediately commenced another run-in. Their spirit and dedication were truly amazing. They were the greatest eight men I have ever seen. Mousel had known her before, but nothing so bad. Undaunted, defiant, more of her sons stepped forward, and by the morning after the tragedy, they were already more than enough volunteers poised to take the places of the lifeboatmen. The lifeboat station they left behind crouched above the sea has been empty ever since, a memorial to them. The towering wooden doors are closed now against the sight of the steep slipway that sent them on their way for the last time. And Mousel's Christmas lights are turned off for an hour of darkened remembrance every year in memory of them. The story of the bravery of the Penley lifeboatman affects me like no other. Perhaps it has to do with the fact that all lifeboat crews are volunteers. People who put themselves in harm's way because they would rather do that than turn their backs on people in danger on the sea. Truly the greatest eight men. And so this Sunday, the 40th anniversary of that disaster will be remembered in Mansell and between eight and 10 o'clock, the lights will dim in memory of those brave, brave men who gave everything 
to try and rescue those in danger. And so we remember them too. In the greatest of storms, the greatest courage was shown by volunteers, the great men of the crew of the Solomon Brown. We will remember them. Thank you.